Welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer channel. This footage shows a man being confronted, arrested, and tased by police officers after he pulled over to the side of the road to observe and record a traffic stop that involved his son. Now, did he have a right to observe and record that traffic stop, or can the police make him leave, or worse? <laughs> Do you need to be behind this traffic stop? Yeah, I do. Why? It's my son right there. He was following me. Before. Okay, he's on a traffic stop, so you don't need to be behind it. Well, you gotta be mean. Oh, I'm not being mean. We just don't like when people pull in behind us. I don't like when they pull my son. That's what we get paid to do, to pull people over. Well, you don't get paid to be a well, you're And you don't either, okay? I don't got to put up with your bull okay? I asked you a simple question, okay? Just being nearby to observe and film a traffic stop is a constitutionally protected activity. This footage comes to us from Los Animas County, Colorado, where the Sheriff's Department is now facing a lawsuit from this man after he was tased in the face by these officers. Kenneth Espinoza was driving to a shop to get his truck serviced. His son was following him separately in another vehicle. But then his son was pulled over by a deputy with the Los Animas County Sheriff's Office for allegedly following too closely to the police car. His father then pulled over behind the deputy quite a ways to observe the stop and to wait for his son. Here's the interaction between the son and the deputy making the stop. Frozen. Okay. What's up? Nothing. Deputy no with the sheriff's office. Let me get your driver's license ready. Pull that dog. Allie, get back. Can I ask why you're a little snippy? What's the problem is? What's the problem? Yeah. Yeah, you're following too closely. Can't you see the roads are icy? You see me slowing down and you're still coming up behind me. There's no reason it's for you to be doing that. Brakes in the it's not good. Don't tell me how I should be driving. I'm not okay, I'm in a yeah, mark. All right, well, I'm in a. That doesn't give you the right to follow a marked patrol car close like that. What if I had to stop? I know there is ice there. That's why I was cruising so I don't slip. There's no reason for you to be trapped, be that close behind a marked patrol car. But that's not the main story here. Rather, the story becomes the officers on the scene getting butthurt that the father is observing and waiting behind the stop. In the body cam video, Deputy Henry Trujillo is seen walking up to the father's window. But first, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, The Ridge Wallet. Every guy I've shown this wallet wants one now. You can now save up to 10% off. Just go to ridge.com slash TCRL. Not only do these wallets look great, coming in a huge assortment of designs, but they are also crafted from materials like carbon fiber weave, titanium, and aerospace grade aluminum, making them extremely durable and rugged. They also block thieves from using RFID technology. I've been running this gold setup for several months now, and I think I like the Ridge key case even more than the wallet, but it's a great combination. Check this out. Easy peasy. No more jumbled mess when I have to go through the courthouse metal detectors. No more searching for the right key when I'm in and out of the office after dark. You can get both of these when you order one of these daily driver kits, which come in an assortment of designs. Gold was, of course, the most expensive. Since mine was free, I got gold, obviously. But if you're not a fan of gold, their website has over 30 colors and styles. There's over 50,000 five-star reviews. They give you a lifetime warranty, as well as a 99-day test drive with a full refund if you don't like it. And check this out, they're also making wedding rings now. It's really, really cool. Again, get the best offer with ridge.com slash TCRL, and right now you can save 10% off. Help support the channel by supporting our sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. <laughs> Do you need to be behind this traffic stop? Yeah, I do. Why? It's my son right there. He was following me before. Okay, he's on a traffic stop, so you don't need to be behind it. Well, you gotta be mean. Oh, I'm not being mean. We just don't like when people pull in behind us. I don't like when they pull my son. That's what we get paid to do, to pull people over. Well, you don't get paid to be an asshole. You're you homeless. don't either, okay? I don't gotta put up with your bullshit, okay? I asked you a simple question, okay? 
He tells Espinoza, the father, that he needs to leave the scene or else he'll be charged. In fact, you need to leave now or you're going to get charged. It's that easy. I'm recording too. I asked you a simple question. If you have a shitty attitude, that's your problem. Okay? Yeah, you saw me and you rolled your window up when I came. Hold on a second, okay? No. You rolled your window up when I walked up, okay? So I knocked on your window, okay? You are not a cop. You don't need to be behind me, okay? So you need to leave right now. No, I don't need to do anything. You got five seconds to leave, okay? There's no reason for you to be behind this traffic stop. No reason, okay? No reason, okay? It's not a public No reason. Do I not pay tax? Do you always stop behind cops? Okay, you don't need to be here. I ain't you don't need right to be behind here. Okay, here. you need to go. No, I okay. don't. I'm waiting on my son. Right, He's my ride right back to Wilson. Leave. Leave. Espinoza refuses, but moments later can be seen attempting to leave the scene. At which point, the deputies prevent him from leaving, including by pointing their weapons at him. That's the part. Stay, 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 stay. Hey, stop the. F Get the f***ing car! Get the f***ing car! Get the f***ing car! Get out the f***ing car! What are you gonna do? You gonna... SC4, SC4, give me that radio. Get out the f***ing car! Get out the car! Get out the f***ing car! Get out the car! Get out the f***ing car! The footage then shows the father being tased multiple times, including while he was handcuffed. You do what you're told, alright? You think it's okay just to roll up on traffic stop? No, I'm not do what you're told. Now you go to jail! Well, what do you want? Don't look your uh, original guy. He's gonna get a citation. He's okay. staying there. That's okay. my original stuff. Okay. What do, you, what do you want from us? What can we do to help? Uh, we should be good. Okay. Um, I got Matt coming to check him out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Peace. You guys Peace. are good with us. All right. Yep. Prosecutors have now dropped all charges against the father, Mr. Espinoza. He had been charged with resisting arrest and assaulting a peace officer. Espinoza's lawsuit now alleges also that Deputy Trujillo shouldn't have even been a deputy in the first place due to his criminal history. In 1997, this deputy was charged with felony menacing with a weapon, which was pled down to misdemeanor disorderly conduct. The following year, he was convicted of misdemeanor harassment. According to the father's attorney, the conviction, that conviction should have barred Trujillo from becoming a certified police officer in Colorado. There were also multiple restraining orders apparently filed against him, including a 2006 domestic abuse allegation, and also including a stalking and assault allegation from 2007. And there's more. Trujillo was apparently forced to resign from the sheriff's office from the sheriff's office in 2009 due to a conviction that is now sealed. What was it? We don't know because it's sealed. But then he was rehired in 2010. And then in 2018, he was promoted. And now, congratulations, he's third in command. The Los Animas County Sheriff released a statement in response to all of this saying that he has asked for help from an outside agency to review the actions of his deputies. He said that Deputy Trujillo is still on active duty. So what is the law here? Did the father have a right to wait and observe his son's traffic stop? The body cam footage indicates that the father was not just waiting and observing the stop, but he was also recording the stop. And that's the most important fact here. Yeah, I'm recording. Did yeah, you find I'm it? Recording too. Good. It just so happens that Colorado, which is in the 10th Federal Circuit, is where case law just dropped last year on this very issue, and it's not good for the officers. The case is Irizarry versus Yahia, 10th Circuit from 2022. And here's the backstory, which may sound familiar to those of you who watch police interactions on YouTube, which you do because you're literally doing it right now. You may have watched the great video that my friend Lackluster did on this very incident. So early in the morning, May 26, 2019, Abade Irizari, a YouTube journalist and blogger, was filming a DUI traffic stop in Lakewood, Colorado. Officer Ahmed Yahia arrived on the scene and stood in front of Mr. Irizari, obstructing his filming of the stop. Officer Yahia shined the flashlight into Mr. Irizari's camera and then drove his police cruiser at the two journalists. You're not required to answer any questions or perform any tests. Turn that light the other way or stand to a different side. He's not going to get out of his way. 
better control his attitude. You got to put a leash on your dog here, buddy. But here is ultimately what the court held. Filming the police officers performing their duties in public is protected activity. Police officers in Colorado will be deprived of qualified immunity where they violate a citizen's First Amendment right to film police officers performing their duties in public and then take retaliatory actions against them. Officers standing in front of a camera, threatening violence, including aiming police cruisers at the individual, violate the First Amendment, according to the federal courts that oversee uh, police officers in Colorado specifically. Does this situation fall under the Irizarry holding? Here's the main point. If you look at the footage from Mr. Irizarry, they are actually much closer there at the to the traffic stop than Mr. Espinoza was here. There's no doubt that police officers have the ability to exercise control over the scene of a traffic stop, as well as the occupants of the vehicle at the traffic stop. But they do not exercise control over nearby bystanders, at least not unless those bystanders have created some reasonable suspicion to believe that they're committing some crime. Just being nearby to observe and film a traffic stop is a constitutionally protected activity. So if the argument is that some Colorado state law authorizes officers to prevent this, it would have to overcome the holding from the Irizarry case. Here, Mr. Espinoza was further away from the stop than were the folks in the Irizarry case. The only real difference is that Mr. Espinoza was in a vehicle pulled over to the side of the road. And I suppose that they could come up with some bogus traffic violation theory to detain him for being there on the side of the road in a vehicle. But aren't we allowed in pretty much every state to pull over on the side of the road if we have some need to do so? That could include waiting on or checking on a family member who is also on the side of the road ahead of you for some reason, including a police stop. Thus, I don't believe really that that argument holds much water at all. The fact that the father is filming the police, I believe, gives him First Amendment protections to do what he's doing. Just because the police officers are afraid of freedom, that's not reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Espinoza, especially where they told him to leave and he actually attempted to leave before they changed their mind. This is a very clear case of First Amendment retaliation. Additionally, if you watch the raw footage sections that I cut out so that the video didn't get restricted here, you'll see that they also used excessive force on Mr. Espinoza. The best case for that is just the fact that they tased him while he was handcuffed. And there's a load of case law depriving qualified immunity from police officers who tased handcuffed arrestees. This is also a good false, false arrest case here. And that just means that they arrested him without a warrant and without probable cause. On top of that, there's just a general Fourth Amendment violation just by virtue of this man being seized and detained in the absence of reasonable suspicion of him having committed a crime. Basically, there's a plethora of constitutional violations here. Thanks for watching. Everyone should spend some time learning the basic constitutional law surrounding interactions between citizens and their government officials. And that's what you just did, whether you realize it or not. So subscribe, both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you want to help fight government abuse and end qualified immunity, I urge you to donate to the Institute for Justice. And you'll find this channel's very own donation link in the description. Your funds will literally keep civil rights lawyers working, suing the government across the country in cases just like this. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it.